On this episode of Under the Hat, we are going to talk about transfers and the whole transfer recruiting process. We're just going to talk transfers and just kind of talk about everything. What does it mean? What does it mean at different levels? What do you do? What do you need to do if you're going to transfer? What should you be, if you are thinking about transferring, what have you really thought about in the moment? And uh, kind of give you some perspective too of what my like coaches are thinking about as well with this transfer process. So we've started getting calls as we always do this time yeah. of year from athletes that are really trying to understand what is the transfer process about? How do you, what are the steps to go through the transfer process? And, you know, pros and cons. Do I stick it out? Uh, do I not? I'm, you know, a lot of, a lot of athletes this time of year are miserable, really, to be quite honest with you. It's a very, very difficult time of year, which we, yes. we talked about last okay. week. Um, so we'll, we're going to start with step one. If you and your family have decided that you're looking to move on and transfer out of the program, uh, number one, we'd love to talk to you and just kind of help you process your thoughts and learn all about your family and the program that you're at and why you're interested in moving on. Just to share our perspective, I think we have a unique perspective when yeah. it comes to transferring. And then, you know, the phases. So, Sam, if you can talk a little bit about the transfer portal as sure. a whole, um, for those of you that don't know what it is, there's a transfer portal. So let's let's start with sure. the portal. So at the NCAA level, we have this portal that's been a big topic of discussion over the last year, and any Division One or Division Two athlete can go into the portal. If you're a Division Three athlete, you don't need to worry about you don't need to go in the portal. It's not for you. Um, you can actually, the division three has a self-release basically to talk about transferring. Um, the portal was set up to make it easier for student athletes across the board that if they were thinking about transferring to go into the portal basically and have an opportunity to find their next home. And so obviously you're going to have to have a discussion with your coach at the end of the day that that will still have to happen. However, you can go right to a compliance officer, compliance office, and fill out the paperwork and saying that you want to go into this portal. And within 24 to 48 hours, your name will be in this transfer portal. And the coaches at the Division I and Division II level have access to getting into this portal. And obviously, it's all sports, again, across the board. And they can go in and see who is available in this portal. Um, Obviously, the portal will continue to change, and what I mean by that is the amount of information that coaches can see in this portal, and so that has increased for the better this upcoming year versus last year because it was the first year of the portal. So with this portal, you guys, it's important that you talk to your coaches before you go to compliance and decide that you want out. Uh, I would highly recommend that you sit down and have a meeting with your coach after the end of the season, which most athletes are going to do anyway. Uh, a lot of college coaches, the majority of them, will do like an end of season meeting wow. and talk about your strengths, your weaknesses, you know, where they want you to improve, things of that nature. And in that meeting, it's it is where it's most appropriate to say, you know, coach, I just I'm having a difficult time. Make sure you really think through the reasons that you want to leave and you're prepared for this conversation because at the end of the day, your next coach, if you're going to go into the portal and you want to transfer out, more than likely, the college coach that's interested in recruiting you will reach out to that coaching staff. So if you are preparing to leave your program, you need to start thinking about making sure that you cover your basis. You need to make sure that you are communicating about what you're struggling with. And at the end of the day, you need to have a very consistent reason why you want to leave. You don't want to tell your head coach of your current program that you're interested because you're homesick and then end up finding a new home even further away yeah. because there's some inconsistencies, if you will, oh, sure. and you're not being transparent. And that's a red flag, by the way, for the new head coach yeah, recruiting you. Absolutely. And 
you know, the other piece is, is that, you know, if you've done your job and you're just not happy and it's just, again, maybe you need to be closer to home, whatever, maybe there's something going on in your family. That's, that's easy. And that it's okay that things happen all the time. And the transfer piece, a lot of kids have done that across again, all sports. Um, but if you're hiding something and there's something that skeletons were in Halloween, the skeleton in your closet, um, I promise you that that's going to get talked about and, and there will be, people are going to be digging into your closet basically to find that for sure. The other thing I want to just mention about the portal too, is if you, especially at the division one level, if you are on scholarship um, and you go into the portal, whenever you choose, if you don't wait till the end of your season, remember that that coach does have the right to pull your money once you head into the portal. And so that could mean that as a family, you might have to finish paying out the rest of that semester, whatever that would cost you once you go into the portal. Um, some coaches aren't doing that. Others have. We have heard that. So just something that I think should be out there for sure. There's some urgency in figuring out a few of these things. You know, if you are planning on going, you need to start really thinking about where you want to focus in the country, mm -hmm. you need to start to put together a game plan. Who yes. are you going to contact and what are you going to do? The last thing you want to do, especially like Sam said, if you're on scholarship and scholarship money is extremely important to your family, your semester is going to come to an end. You need to figure out where can you actually transfer. We have a couple of, of young ladies that we're working with yeah. currently that scholarship <laughs> money is a driving force and, you know, trying to figure out a game plan with, with how we're going to approach the whole process. One of them's at a, a high academic institution yes. and wanting to transfer into another high academic institution. There's some challenges with that. Yes. Not everybody allows you to transfer in at the semester. And so, you need to think about that as well. You may be stuck wherever you are, if you will, yes. for the remainder of the year. We're huge fans of trying to get in. If you're going to make a switch, trying to get in at the semester because it gives you a great opportunity to transition in, go in at the spring, yes. start to build a rapport with the coaching staff and understand the expectations of the program. And I think, quite frankly, gives you a, a higher chance of success for your next fall. But yeah. you can speak about this as a coach. No, I agree. And <clears throat> you made a great point about the academic piece, that there are some of the higher academic institutions transferring in at the spring might logistically just not be an option. It might have to be for that fall if you find that next right, you know, your perfect fit. Um, I think going in at the spring is huge. One, the training piece in the spring is way different than the fall, and especially if you've never been through that. Um, so again, getting acclimated to how that coaching staff and how they run and train in the spring. Um, again, the school piece, um, meeting your teammates, um, getting to know the school as a whole, maybe meeting some people outside of your volleyball world or your volleyball bubble. Um, so that spring will honestly allow you a little bit more of an opportunity to do that than full go in the fall when pretty much right now, right, it is eat, sleep, school, volleyball, you're on repeat for the whole week pretty much. I would also suggest in terms of, of putting together a game plan, talking to your family to start to figure out, okay, who did you talk to when you were going through the process before? One of the other things you need to know, you're not going to be able to transfer from your school to another school in your conference without some serious repercussions, yeah. if you will. You'll have to sit out, you lose eligibility. You're probably not going to want to do that. And so you need to start thinking about who you talk to in your previous recruiting process to figure out, is yeah. there anybody that you should be reapproaching? Again, you can always reach out to us and get some help and some feedback. We use our personal relationships with college coaches to get insight and find out, is there a need? Do they know if they're losing some players already? Some athletes are really transparent with the coaches and say, I'm really struggling here and I think I'm going to have to go. We would recommend that you are having conversations to communicate your needs to the coaches selflessly, by the way. <laughs> you need to have conversations with your coaches and learn how to communicate so that you can put together your game plan. Again, 
college coaches are going to call your current coach to find out what did you do to try and make your situation better? Yeah. I mean, people are going to call. It might be your college, your previous college coach, might be your club coach, other people that they know that maybe you played volleyball for in this world. I, I promise you, people are going to reach out. They're going to stalk your social media because look, you only have one opportunity to make this right the next go around. And guess what? As a coach, they have an opportunity to maybe make their team better, which is the excitement of bringing in a transfer, somebody with a little bit of experience, et cetera. But at the same time, if they've been working hard to build the culture and where their program is going and it's headed in that right direction, they don't want to bring that bad egg, quite frankly, in that's going to take away everything that they've been working on. So there's a lot of homework on both sides that will and must take place for this to be successful. Yeah, there's always a red flag with a transfer. There's some coaches that prefer not to take transfers, not from the JUCO level necessarily, but from a four-year transferring to another four-year, there are definitely some coaches that have some hesitation with that. And so they will absolutely do their homework. They'll call previous club coaches. They'll talk to um, anybody and everybody that they can connect with to learn more about you. And remember, there's some urgency, right? So you have a very short window of time for you to be able to make this move unless you decide not to leave at the semester and to stay. Yep. If you stay at the semester, not every college coach is going to continue to train you while you yes. are there. They may say, you're cutting ties, we want your stuff, thanks so much, have a good day, and that's their right to not wanna spend time continuing to train you to go into somebody else's program. For sure. So you need a game plan for that too. Where are you going to go and get reps? How are you going to be in the best shape? You know, there's nothing worse now that you've lived through a life of, of being in a program. You understand the importance of making sure that you're in the best shape possible going into preseason. So what are you going to do to get the reps that you need to make sure that you're in the absolute best shape and you're not going in uh, out of shape? Absolutely. And then to go off that, the school piece, you must take care of your schoolwork. If, if you are not taking care of your schoolwork and you're struggling in the classroom and your GPA is not where it needs to be, uh, that's going to be a red flag as well. Remember, especially at the D1 level, I mean, at all levels, the academic piece is super, super important to everybody. But for a lot of coaches, their jobs are also determined on the fact of how successful their players are in the classroom as well. And quite frankly, there's a lot of coaches out there who don't want to babysit. <laughs> that, that is the honest truth. If you're looking at somewhere where there's an academic support team that's all about it, great. Um, they know that they have support to manage that piece. But there's a lot of places where coaches have point blank told us, like, look, uh, volleyball-wise, I think this person would be a great fit. But I don't need to babysit another person in the classroom. I already have three that I'm dealing with. Sam, can you speak about the 424 year, uh, 424 rules if you're a transfer? So I think this is really important too. A lot of times families think that if they're at a four year that, you know, and their kid's miserable, they could come home at the semester and they could go to a JUCO and then transfer out. Can you speak to the 424 rule? Because yes. this is really important for yeah. people to understand before you make these critical sure. decisions. Um, so obviously, Kara just said, you know, sometimes somebody might go to, let's just say, a Division One school and go for a semester. Things didn't work out, and you decided you need to leave. Well, maybe you, can, you figured out at the end of the day it's in your best interest to attend a junior college, maybe in your hometown. Well, that's great. You can go to your junior college, right? Maybe they have a great volleyball program. And then after that, <clears throat> next fall, you're like, well, I wanna, I'm ready. I'm going to transfer back in. Not so fast. Okay, because what's going to happen is, is that now you've commit, you know, you've had another semester of school and what's going to happen is, is that, that if you're going to go back to division one, they're going to say, you need to have that associate's degree and you need to finish up that two year degree. Sometimes it takes people less than two years when totally understand that, but having that associate's degree is going to be important before transferring into another four year institution, hence the 424. So think about that. If you are a freshman at a four year right now and you're unhappy, you cannot just go home and go to a JUCO for a semester and think that you're going to leave and go back to a division one school. Even if you are recruited, doesn't matter if you think you're good enough, it's irrelevant. 
you have to get your associate's degree. So again, understanding these rules are critical to making the right choices here when you're looking at, at going through the transfer process. Transferring at the semester doesn't always work out for everyone if you don't have a game plan. This is why we are begging and urging you to reach out and have a conversation if you're thinking that you want to leave because you've got one shot, one shot to get it right. And after that, number one, no one's going to take you again because you've already been unhappy twice. So it just means you're an unhappy person. So (laughs) we'll start with that. Uh, And, you know, it's a red flag, right? But you don't want to put yourself in a bad position where you really screw yourself because you don't understand these rules you have to get it right you really need a game plan we, you're going to hear us say that till you're blue over in the face and, over. and and i think the junior college i'm we're fans of junior colleges i mean we have kids that we work with that might have to go that route or take that route to make them successful I, all for it we have friends that are successful junior college coaches and have been and transferred on to other side of things so if you're going to transfer from a four year and have to go to that two year I'm just going to mention that I think it's really important that you go to that right two-year institution. Obviously, there's a volleyball piece, but there's an academic piece, and you want to make sure that you're going to get taken care of so that you are eligible to go back to that four-year institution. Yeah, we, we're huge fans of Terry Gamble, who's at Blinn College. In fact, he's coming to our showcase uh, in a, in a couple <laughs> weeks, so we're excited about that. Um, so special shout-out to Terry. But um, also – you know, there are, there are junior colleges that do have scholarship money available. And again, yep. really checking out the JUCO coach too and finding out what are they doing to help Absolutely. their athletes transfer on and move on to the next level. And, and maybe even doing some homework on athletes that have transferred out, trying to reach out to them on Insta and see if you yep. can, you know, connect one way or another and, and learn a little bit about what their experience was like at the junior college that they were at as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, you guys, that's it. We're wrapping up our transfer. It's a good discussion. Yeah, Yeah. this is a great podcast, and we're super excited to connect with you. If you are thinking about transferring and you have questions, please reach out. Please reach out. I'm Kara at MyRecruitingSolutions.com. And I'm Sam at MyRecruitingSolutions.com. You can also hit us up on Insta and the DM, V-Ball Recruiter. Happy to you know, take any inquiries that way. If you're thinking about transferring, know that we want to just kind of process your thoughts and help you figure out if transferring is your best move. The grass is not always greener on the other side. So it's important to know the reasons that you want to leave uh, because playing college volleyball is just really tough all the way around. For so. sure. But it provides you a safe environment mm-hmm. to have that discussion. All right, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. And until next time.